Testing, one, two, three, three, two, one. Testing, testing, testing. All right. Welcome to Empty Cross Ministries Bible Study. I'm Brother David. The name of the program is KJV Exposed. That is King James Version Exposed. Because we use the King James Version, we look at each verse, break it down, bring it to life, and expose the meaning. Today we're going to be looking at the Gospel of John, chapter 13, and this will be part two of that study as we continue in our study of the Gospel of John. And we're going to open up with a word of prayer, and then we'll get right to the study. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your preserved word. We thank you for all that you do and provide for us, Father. We ask that you open our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to be receptive to what you have to say to us and these passages that we're about to explore. Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross to take all of our sins and shortcomings away through the torture and the blood that was shed on the cross. It's in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray these things. Amen. All right, we'll get right to it as soon as I get it pulled up here. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Once again, this is St. Cross Ministries Bible Study, and we are looking at John chapter 13. Part 2, and that is the Gospel of John. John chapter 13, verse 21 reads, When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit, and testified, and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. This had to come as quite a shock to Jesus' disciples, they knew that Jesus told the truth. Jesus was not troubled for himself, but for Judas Iscariot. The term used here, troubled, here is strong and signifies horror, anxiety, and agitation. Jesus' contemplation of taking on the wrath of God for the sins of the world caused revulsion in the sinless Savior. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. John chapter 13 verse 22 reads, Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. These disciples all knew each other well. They had worked with Jesus together for over three years. Each was questioning within himself which one it might be. Each was all hoping it was not him. John chapter 13 verse 23 reads, Now there was, a, now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of the disciples whom Jesus loved. This is the first reference to John the Apostle, the author of the Gospel. He specifically mentioned himself at the cross, at the empty tomb, by the Sea of Tiberias, and in the next to last verse where he is referred to as the author of the gospel. Chapter, that's chapter 21, verse 24. One of his disciples, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was John. Peter beckoned to him to ask Jesus to identify the betrayer. Peter was carrying a sword. Perhaps he intended to use it on the culprit on this occasion. This is John speaking of himself. John loved Jesus so very much that he wanted to be as near to Jesus as he could. John chapter 13 verses 24 and 25 read, Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then, lying on Jesus' breast, with, said, saith unto him, 
Lord, who is it? Peter leans over to the disciples next to Jesus. We see that in chapter 21, verse 20. And ask him who it is that Jesus is talking about. John chapter 13, verse 26 reads, Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. A host would often distinguish an honored guest by giving him a choice, a choice morsel dipped in the sauce and placing it on his tongue. Because Jesus passed it so easily to Judas, it has been suggested that he was seated near the Lord in a place of honor. Jesus was demonstrating a final gesture of his love for Judas, even though he would betray him. Contrast this with Judas's kiss in the garden. Evidently, only John heard the explanation of this act. Look at verse 28. Jesus handed the sop to Judas. He said by handing him the sop that it was Judas who would betray him. John chapter 13 verse 27 reads, And after the sop, Satan entered into him, then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. Some people look at this and think that Judas had no choice, but that is not so. Judas was a thief, and earlier Jesus said Judas was a devil. Judas did not have to allow Satan to enter him. Let me say that again. Judas did not have to allow Satan to enter him. He had a free will that he could have activated. Judas was personally possessed by Satan himself in his betrayal of Jesus. I need to get a drink here. John chapter 13 verse 28 reads, now, no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. John and Peter might have not been included in the men at the table. These two were hanging on to Jesus and probably heard what Jesus said. They possibly didn't know why he said it until later. The others around the table for sure did not know. John chapter 13 verse 29 reads, For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, that Jesus had said unto him, Buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. They were probably very noisy around the table, talking to each other. There were 13 people at the table. Those around the table did not hear just exactly what Jesus said. They just knew that he had said something to Judas. John chapter 13 verse 30 reads, He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. It was night. Although this was a historical reminiscence of John, the phrase may also be imbued with profound theological implications. It was the hour for Judas to be handed over completely to the power of darkness, Satan. Look at Luke chapter 22, verse 53. Given the light versus darkness imagery in John's writing, this observation should not go unnoticed. The Lord Jesus is about to engage the forces of darkness. This is the hour he has long awaited. Remember, this whole betrayal, trial, and scourging took place in the middle of the night. John chapter 13 verse 31 reads, Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. John 
Jesus is speaking prophetically here that he will be glorified when Judas betrays him and the Father will be glorified as well. Glorified refers to Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Verses 31 through, thir 31 through 33. Glorified. With Judas gone, the final events were set in motion Rather than looking at the agony of the cross, Jesus looked past the cross, anticipating the glory that he would have with the Father when it was over. Look at chapter 17, verses 4 and 5, and Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. John chapter 13, verse 32 reads, If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him the father and the son are glorified together we would not see the glory of the cross but had there been no cross we would not be saved jesus lived in glorification in heaven he left his home in glory he won the victory on the cross and returned to glory in so doing, he made a way for us to be with him in his glory. You see, not only will he be God the Word, which is glory enough, but he will be King of kings and Lord of lords. To be glorified is to be elevated to the highest. Not only is this glory for Jesus, but for the Father as well. Their plan is for the people of the world has been completed. John chapter 13 verse 33 reads, Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whether, whither I go, ye cannot come, so now I say to you. This statement was recorded in chapter 8 verse 21. These little children here are Jesus' followers. He reminds his followers that he is soon to depart this earth and go back to heaven where he came from. <clears throat> Jesus has such great love for his followers and his heart is heavy because he knows they cannot immediately follow him to heaven. He also knows the terrible loss they will feel when he is no longer with them. Verses 34 and 35. Having announced his departure and having insisted that his disciples could not come with him, Jesus began to lay out what he expected of them after his leaving. Love is to serve as the distinguishing characteristic of discipleship. That's verse 35. John chapter 13 verse 34 reads, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. The commandment to love was not new, that you see that in Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5, commanded love for God and commanded loving one's neighbor as oneself. Look at Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. However, Jesus' command regarding love presented a distinctly new standard for two reasons. One, it was sacrificial love modeled after his love. As I loved you, chapter 15, verse 13. Secondly, it produced through the new covenant it is, let me say that again, I'm getting tongue twisted. Secondly, it is produced through the new covenant by the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. This is spoken to Jesus 11. He knew that some of them had been a little jealous of each other and that they were not all from similar backgrounds, so they might have problems working together. To stop all of this, Jesus says, I give you a new commandment. This is not a suggestion. It is a commandment. 
He did not stop with just love one another either. He added, as I have loved you. This means to have unselfish love. Jesus' love for us was not because of something we did, but in spite of what we did. He is really saying, love them even when they are unlovely. This is speaking of the agape love. John chapter 13 verse 35 reads, By this all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one, if you have love one to another. Let me read that verse again. John chapter 13, verse 35. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have love one to another. Jesus is saying here that this great unselfish love for each other would set them aside from the rest of the world because the people who are worldly do not know how to love like this. Jesus, their leader, loved like this and left a pattern of this kind of love for them and us to follow. The greatest love anyone could have would be to give his life for his fellow man. And that is just what Jesus did. John chapter 13 verse 36 reads, Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? Jesus answered him, Whither I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. His work was nearly finished. Theirs was just beginning. Particularly, Peter had, work, had a work to do. Only Jesus, as the sinless sacrifice for the trespasses of the world, could go to the cross and die. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 22-24. Also, only he could be glorified in the presence of the Father with the glory that he possessed before his incarnation. Look at chapter 12, verse 41, and chapter 17, verses 1 through 5. Peter does not understand what Jesus is saying here. He wants to have the security of the Lord Jesus with him, even if he must go to the death with him. Peter is ready to fight for the Lord. He carries a sword, you remember, with which he cuts off the ear of the soldier. I think Peter's problem came when Jesus didn't fight back, but submitted willingly to the death on the cross. I believe Peter would have fought unto the death for Jesus had that been what Jesus wanted. Peter just did not understand why Jesus wouldn't fight back. John chapter 13, verses 37 and 38 read, Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, The cock shall not crow, till thou hast denied me thrice. Peter's profession reveals his pride. Jesus predicts just the opposite response from Peter that Peter claims would occur. This is the second of three times when John contrasts Peter with Judas. Look also at chapters 6 and 18. You see by this Peter's willingness to fight. My view of Peter is of a very strong man physically. He was a fisherman. Peter was possibly one of the strongest apostles. He had said earlier that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus told him flesh and blood had not revealed that to him, but God. Spiritually and physically, Peter was one of the strongest. This prediction Jesus made about Peter would haunt him. It would leave an indelible print in Peter's heart. The others will be strengthened in their faith as well because Jesus told Peter this before it happened. This has been Empty Cross Ministries Bible Study. 
I'm Brother David. Once again, the name of the program is KJV Exposed. That is King James Version Exposed. Because we use the King James Version, we look at each verse, break it down, bring it to life, and expose the meaning. If you want to see uh, these uh, devotionals and Bible studies in a uh, written out form, you can find them on our website at www.EmptyCrossMinistries.com as well as Empty Cross Ministries Facebook page and Empty Cross Ministries group Facebook page as well as on my own personal Facebook page. You can also find these podcasts in those uh, very same places. If you go to our website, depending on the browser that you're using, there may be uh, the right hand corner of the screen you need to click on that to get to the devotionals and Bible studies we're going to close out here with the word of prayer Heavenly Father thank you for this time to explore your word thank you for all that you do and provide thank you for the sunshine the coolness of the breeze the warmth of that sunshine Father thank you for the snow for the rain and for the weather, Father. For it's by those things that we know when to plant and when to harvest. And by those things we know when to bundle up and when to not bundle up, Father. Father, be with those who are suffering from any kind of illness, whether it be physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual. Just put your healing touch upon them. Be with those who are facing the loss of a loved one. Just make your presence known to them in ways that only you can do, in ways that they can see, hear, feel, and understand, and know that that peace that comes upon them is your peace, that peace that surpasses all human understanding. Father, forgive us when we fall short of your glory, whether it be in word, thought, or deed, Lord. For we fall so short of your glory so many times each and every day. It's your wisdom that you knew we needed a Savior, a Redeemer, and a Redeemer King. Father, thank you for sending your Son Jesus to die on the cross in our place. Father, help us to not be a Judas, but to be like the Apostle John and even like the like the Apostle Peter help us to be strong in our faith and let that strength of our faith show to others that we might be your light the light of Jesus to others around us Father we ask these things in Jesus precious and holy name Amen and Amen Folks stay safe be blessed stay in the word and write the word upon your heart. Until next time, as we continue our study in the Gospel of John, and we will we will be coming into the Gospel of John, chapter 14. Until next time.